Welcome. My name is Romeo Durscher and I'm the Vice President of Public Safety here at Autarian. Autarian is the premier enterprise drone software company and we have a big vision. After having worked in the drone industry for almost a decade, I decided to join Autarian and immediately I got introduced to concepts and terms that I didn't really fully understand. Things like open source, open standards and PixHawk were thrown at me and I needed to better get a grip on that. I've learned that many people in the industry also don't fully see that bigger vision. So I decided to invite Dr. Lawrence Meyer, the co-founder and CEO of Ateria, to join me to help paint a bigger picture. We have about 11 different segments, so now sit back and enjoy. Hello, my name is Romeo and I'm here in our Autarian studio. I joined Autarian, the premier enterprise drone software company, and immediately I got confronted with terms that were very unfamiliar to myself. Things like open source, open standards, and even product names were thrown at me and I immediately had to learn this new concept. So I decided why not bring in the person that can talk about these terms the best and allow me to ask some questions to Dr. Lawrence Meyer, the co-founder and CEO of Atarian, the person that is pretty much responsible that we are here today and that we have a vision that is greater and grander than what we have seen in the drone industry. So over the next few segments, we're going to be talking about these various topics and Lawrence will give us some really good insights into this really fascinating system that Autarian is providing to not only end users, drone operators, but also drone and payload manufacturers. So let's get started. I'm welcoming here Lawrence, our CEO and co-founder of Autarian. And thank you so much for spending some time with me and really going into more details on these really interesting concepts that many have heard about but may not fully understand. And one of the biggest questions that I get is, what is open source? And how does it impact me in the drone industry? I think it's really important to ask these questions because the whole drone industry effectively is built around open source, at least um, a large portion of it. And it's the modern fundamental way to build uh, software in the 21st century. There's an interesting um, saying, uh, software eats the world, but open source eats software. And even companies like Microsoft have come around uh, to realize that um, Microsoft has been the leading proprietary vendor for quite some time. But today, Microsoft is actually the largest contributor to open source software globally, at least according to the metrics I've seen. And what very often is confusing when you start in that world is that open source software also means that source code is publicly available, which is important for transparency, which is important for security. And that can at times be confused with free, because yes, you can download the source code, but source code is not a final product. Source code is the technology or represents the building blocks that you use. And you still need to take that source code and put it into a product. You still need to uh, maintain that source code. And that's, um, you know, software maintenance is something that not a lot of people have talked outside of the open source industry. But the, the easy way to explain it is we're seeing massive cybersecurity threats across the globe right now in a absolutely unprecedented level and the cybersecurity threats are the result of software maintenance gone wrong because it is not the case that windows or any other software is inherently unsafe it becomes unsafe once it's outdated or not configured properly and that is something that needs to happen for open source software too you cannot just download source code and then install it on your system and expect it to work you need to regularly update it. You need to potentially adapt it to your local environment. And 
That makes open source software both readily available, but also inherently hard to use if you try to use technology and you confuse technology with a final product. And that is pretty much the problem that Red Hat identified as a enterprise operating system and enterprise software stack vendor in the 90s. And that is the problem that we have identified at Otarion. So what Otarion does is it brings the fantastic work of a global developer community around PX4, around Mavlink, around other projects that we will talk more about. And it puts it into a productized form that is maintained where you get regular updates, where the flight safety is ensured and tested. And we as a company make open source software as easy to adopt as you expect that from a commercial product. Okay, and I, from an end user perspective, I, I see many benefits. Uh, for example, something can be done quicker because you have such a large community behind it. It's true that it's quicker, but I think there, there, sort of, there are different dimensions of quick. One dimension of quick is I have a problem, I need to address it right away. Now, if you are the person or the organization understanding the problem, you're also in the best position to solve it. When you have software available as open source, then what you can do is you can go straight into that software piece, right into the technology, and understand why the problem occurs or why the feature is missing. It doesn't always have to be a problem. It can be also a lack of a feature. And you can maybe experiment how to, how to add that. And that is also possible in Atarian's product. Um, PX4 is open source available. And very often we, we find that these contributors might not find, know the optimal path to solve it, but by choosing a path and by showing the path they've chosen, we can help them to then take an approach that maybe is more robust or easier to maintain. So that's one key benefit and that just makes you a ton faster in going to market, but also in solving problems. The other part, um, which is true around open source software compared to proprietary implementation is that when you product manage a solution centrally, you will always focus on your current customers and on your current needs. And so you have a narrow scope and you have to have that narrow scope because you have to fund that development. In an open source project, however, you have multiple organizations and academics and rarely, but some um, hobbyists coming together and they explore new directions. Uh, in our case, for example, Otarian right now is very focused on drones because that's the largest market, but we have developers in our open source community who are experimenting with submarines and rovers and boats and blimps and all sorts of things. And what they are doing in the open source project might not be as productized and ready for prime time, but it is a great start and so whenever Octarian customers or PX4 users face a new problem, it's very likely that there is some initial work already there, but it is initial work and that come, we, we close the loop here to what I said earlier, open source is not necessarily, um, if you're not consuming it through a vendor, a, a finished, polished, readily available product. And I believe that's what a lot of people can also relate to that they've used some open source software, but the user interface wasn't super easy to use or the documentation was at miss or because people are building technology together. They're not building a product together. It still needs that productization step to be ready for common end users. And that's where we come into the picture. We take all of that and we put it together. So it then provides benefits to the end users for those various needs that are out in the market, correct? Yes, that's the role of Otarian. And what's important, it's not a one-way street. It's not that the company you know, takes it, uh, work that has been done by a global developer community. No, Otarian is also at the same time the largest contributor uh, to that developer community. So a lot of our work fl flows back into it and it enables those developers, th those technologists like I was myself just a couple of years ago, and I'm still contributing actively, 
um, to you know make the next move to build a rover, to build a more interesting drone configuration, to build a VTOL. And <clears throat> quite naturally, it means that Otarian as a company is focused a little bit more on stability and safety and security than um, about the latest new features. But for that, we have great innovators who are pushing the envelope. It's safe to say that the ecosystem, including the developer community, is that, that key component to be more successful, more agile, and provide better and quicker solutions to end users. Yes, we believe the way we're building software is fundamentally the winning approach to build software, also for drones. And the, I mean, the development in the enterprise space, in, in web technology, it's, it's all driven by open source today. And it also, what's important, it creates a movement and an ecosystem that is a lot bigger than any single project or any single company like Otarian. So in a way, the agreement is to leave a lot of value on the table, to not try to monetize everything and to enable, however, then more people with the same technology. So you can say, um, we're creating a bigger cake so that every ca everybody can participate. And that also means it's in particular very enabling for smaller businesses, which by themselves are not in a position to um, for example, to build a complete software stack for a drone today. It's, it's too much work. They, they just cannot compete. And so the question is, do they get priced out of the market of the whole industry uh, entirely? And we will continue to have a drone industry with one or two or three companies. Or are we enabling a pattern where a small or mid-sized business is actually able to go to market with a full product because they have that design flexibility, they have the ability to put building blocks together, and in the end, the end customer wins because they can get more specialized solutions for the individual problem, rather than if they just have to pick from two vendors, and for each vendor, that particular use case might not have enough volume in order to, to really address the core need. This is a really fascinating topic, open source. Some really great insights from Lawrence Meyer here at Tarion. In our next segment, we're going to be talking about open standards, very closely related to open source, but very different in many ways. Stay tuned. <music>